It seems like it was only yesterday that we were talking about PCIe Gen 4. So to hear that PCIe Gen 5 is not only upon us, but is already built into the current generation products that we already have, well that's a, a bit of a surprise, it seems a bit fast. So what's the deal with PCIe Gen 5? How fast is it? What even actually supports it? And why should you care? Well, I'm aiming to answer all of those questions, so stick around. PCIe straight up doubles its transfer rate every generation. Gen 3 runs at 8 giga transfers per second, Gen 4 runs at 16, and Gen 5, oh, well, you guessed it, runs at 32. Giga transfers per second, by the way, is the sort of theoretical limit before actually encoding any data. In the real world, that means that an X16 sized slot running at Gen 3 caps at around 16 gigabytes per second, run it at Gen 4 and you'll get 31.5 gigabytes per second, and Gen 5 smashes through 63 gigabytes per second, which is frankly insane. This improvement comes from a, a number of changes, as always, primary of which though is an insanely fast clock. 32 gigahertz specifically. That is a pulse every 31.25 picoseconds and is over six times faster than the CPUs that actually manage and run all of that data. Mental. And speaking of the CPUs, the platforms that support Gen 5 already exist. Well, at least one of them anyway. Intel's latest Alder Lake CPUs, their 12th gen lineup, and their accompanying Z690 motherboards already support PCIe Gen 5. It's fairly limited support though, with most motherboards only supporting the it to the top x16 slot. Although some boards do also support it going to the second x16 slot, the one that's also connected to the CPU, which can be uh, used to split the 16 lanes coming from the CPU to two sets of eight. Uh, that can run at Gen 5 speeds as well, at least on some boards. No boards that I'm aware of though support PCI Gen 5 to any M.2 slots though, meaning the only way to make use of a Gen 5 SSD would be to use an, or install a PCI to M.2 card, one that also is rated for Gen 5 as well, in one of those X16 slots. AMD's upcoming Zen 4 based Ryzen 7000 series chips and the accompanying uh, X670E motherboards, uh, those will fully support PCIe Gen 5, meaning that everything from the X16 slots to the M.2 that directly connected to the CPU, and the dual chip chipsets and everything that gets connected to those can all run at full Gen 5 speeds. That is impressive for sure, although interestingly the more standard version of the X670 chipset will also support Gen 5, but only for quote storage and graphics, i.e. only the lanes that are directly connected to the CPU. Finally, their more budget option will also support Gen 5 but only to the Direct Connect M.2 slots, not to the X16 slots for your graphics card or to the chipset. That's so that those B650 boards can still remain cheaper with not having to, to build out the very uh, well shielded and uh, traces and the extra hardware requirements that are required to communicate that quickly. Okay, so we have the chicken, but what about the egg? What hardware can you actually plug into those slots, those ports? What can you use with these Gen 5 platforms? Right now, your options are um, pretty sparse. In fact, uh, as far as I'm aware, the only commercially available product that supports PCI Gen 5 is Nvidia's data center Hopper uh, H100 GPU Accelerator, and that's about it. That uh, might cost you a pretty penny, as it's uh, currently listed for somewhere around $40,000, and is very much a data center application specific card. It's a machine learning training card, a, a scientific co uh, computation and analysis, uh, data management, that sort of stuff. It's designed for that, not, sadly, for gaming. But what about storage? 
Well, Fizen demoed their new E26 controller a couple weeks ago, uh, which included or which peaked at just under 12.5 gigabytes per second on reads and around 10 gigabytes per second in writes, which is just like mind blowing. I mean, that sort of performance is literally four Gen 3 drives in RAID 0, but from a single drive. And that's nowhere near the maximum that four lanes can offer. We can expect much closer to 16 gigabytes per second, which is absolutely incredible and more than anyone could need for a long while yet. Which brings us nicely onto, but why though? If you don't have anything to do with a data center or a server farm, PCI Gen 5 does not matter to you. For enterprise users, being able to double the bandwidth you have to your network or storage or accelerator cards, that is a big deal. Although even then, it's still gonna take a few years for Gen 5 chips, boards, and devices to make their way through the, the validation and security revisions before companies actively adopt them. A Gen 5 X16 slot will now be able to run 400 gigabit per second network cards, literally doubling the total bandwidth that that card can make use of. Eventually, we will get consumer products that support Gen 5, likely storage first, then graphics cards later. And of course, more bandwidth is always more better, but realistically, it's likely to be a good decade or so before it's a necessity. Looking back at PCIe Gen 3, that's been in CPUs and motherboards since 2011, but it took until late 2016 for an SSD to come out that could actually make use of that of the full bandwidth available, and for most people, that's still an incredibly fast drive and more than the average user needs. Sure, when direct storage or the direct storage API actually comes about, a fast drive will be really useful, but a full speed Gen 3 drive is still going to perform perfectly well for years to come. Gen 4 was a touch faster in its set of full speed development, but even with direct storage, that's still likely to be a bit overkill for even gamers for a while yet. Even looking at graphics cards, most GPUs don't use more bandwidth than a Gen 3 X16 slot can provide. Only the most recent highest end cards have started to exceed that limit. So if we aren't even close to needing Gen 4, you really don't need Gen 5. But it's cool though. So that's a look at PCIe Gen 5, what supports it and why you should not care. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. If you want to see more videos like this one, I have a whole series of explaining tech stuff like the PCIe standards, motherboards, CPUs, and a whole load of other stuff. So do check that out on the end cards when they pop up in a second. If you want to be notified of new videos from me, you can hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. And if you want to support the channel and keep me making videos like these as well, you can do so directly through YouTube itself for the YouTube join button, become a YouTube member and get some cool rewards for doing so, or you can sign up to Patreon instead if you would rather. You can also check out a load of affiliate links for stuff like these Alder Lake CPUs and motherboards, or uh, there's also places like Overclock UK if you're buying from there, there's a link to that down below. And there's also stuff like merch hoodies or t-shirts like this one, a load of other designs that I made myself. Otherwise, I'll leave it there. If you have any questions, like I said, leave those in the comments. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.